Welcome back to the lab, guys. Today, I'm going to be going over how to install VMware vCenter 6.0 on Windows Server 2016. To begin, let's go ahead and mount our ISO. I've got it here on my desktop. This is vCenter 6.0. You can download it from their website. To mount, just double click it, or you can come back over. You can right click and click mount. That'll open it up in Windows Explorer, as you see here. Go ahead and double click auto run. That'll bring up the Windows installer for VMware. Go ahead and click install. And this will start the install process. It's going to be a bunch of next, so let's click next. Right here, we're going to go ahead and accept the license agreement. Click next. Next is the embedded deployment. Now, we're just going to be doing the embedded deployment, guys, because we're not going to be doing anything too crazy. This is just the basics of how to install vCenter and how to get it up and running. And we're going to get everything installed on one single system. So let's go ahead and click next. Here's the system name and how we're going to get to it. This is its DNS name and what it's going to be referred to. I was going to name it Bodhi vCent, but since I used a clone script to build this, I'm going to put it back to what it was. Here it's letting me know that everything's on DHCP. That's fine. For this purpose, we're going to keep it on DHCP. Next, we'll need to set our password. Our password here is just going to be the default password that we want to be able to use to log in as administrator at vSphere.local. Go ahead and get that password in and click Next once ready. Next, we're going to be using a Windows local service account. Go ahead and click Next. A lot of these things are going to say default here as we go through them. Once again, leave it as default. We're going to use the Postgres database manager. You can use your own if you want to. Go ahead and click Next. After that, it's going to show you all the ports that vCenter is going to be using and need access to. Go ahead and click Next. Actually, I'm going to go back, hold on one second, because I want to go over something. If you have IIS installed, and sometimes it comes pre-installed, port 80 and 443 will be taken. So you'll have to uninstall it to get that working. Back over to this page, this is where we're going to be installing it at. And after that is the VMware Join Client, you know, if we're going to be doing the customer survey. And after that is the Ready to Install page. So we're going to go ahead and click Ready to Install. Click Install. It's going to go ahead and start its process, and from here, I'm going to let some
All right. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and let's get a. Uh, you know, I'm not going to launch the vSphere client here. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to click finish, actually. And we're going to just let it finish up. And I'm going to go ahead and take us through the steps of actually installing vSphere client. So that way we can actually use the vSphere client instead of the web access. Because the web access on 6.0 isn't the greatest. I mean, it works, don't get me wrong, but it's not the greatest. So go over back to the installer, click vSphere client, click install. It'll extract itself. It's going to take some time. That's all right. Let it go ahead and do its thing. That's the thing about a lot of these VMware installs, and I mean, um, if you install Exchange, you install a lot of different things, a lot of some of these roles and such. It's just a time-consuming thing. You just gotta wait, you gotta hurry up and wait, kind of babysit the machine, just like I'm doing here now, just making sure that things are getting done. It's actually extracting, not getting hung up anywhere. So we're gonna continue here, just let this go. I'm gonna you know, walk you guys through the vSphere install, and then right after we're done actually installing the vSphere client, we'll jump over and we'll do the vSphere update manager, We'll install the server side of it so that way it's in integrated with our vCenter server so we can upgrade hosts and such that are actually in our clusters or that are being managed, I should say, by our vCenter server. All right, once that's done and extracted, go ahead and click OK. That's going to run the installer. Go ahead and let the installer do its thing. It'll pop up. We're going to go ahead and click next, accept the agreement, click next again, next again, install. It's pretty basic. So we're just going to go ahead and let it run. Now this usually takes some time sometimes to install. Sometimes it goes very fast. It all just depends on the system that you're using and how much you know you have it set up. This is a, um, a server with four cores and 16 gigs of RAM, so it's it's usually pretty fast, but these .NET frameworks, for sometimes they can just sit there and hang, so we'll go ahead and just let it kind of do its thing, I'm not really too worried about it. It's really taking a long time on this one, isn't it? <laughs> we're going to go ahead and we're just going to let it do its thing, keep letting it go. Once this is done, installing usually goes pretty fast. These .NET frameworks, like I said, for some reason they hang. You can install them you know, beforehand, which is not a bad thing. You can actually go into the server roles. You can install, I think, all the way from 3.5, maybe even further down if you go in. I can't remember if you can still select 2.0 or not on 2016 and install all that. But you can install all the .NET framework beforehand and not have to deal with waiting for it to actually install itself. But we're going to go ahead and keep on waiting. Like I was saying, a lot of these installs take its time. You can go ahead and skip further up in the video if you want to, if you're not wanting to wait for the .NET framework, I completely understand. There'll be some music later on here in just a bit, guys, whenever it's actually installing Update Manager server side, because that, that takes quite a bit of time for it to get, for it to get done. Come on over there, just kind of click it on it to try to see, hey, you hung up, what's going on, you done? There we go. See, sometimes it just needs a little nudge. Now it's got to install some Microsoft Visual. These usually go pretty quick. But it all depends, like I said, on the performance of your system, what kind of system you're using, what's your host, is it a VM, is it physical? Now, later on I'm going to do a video over the virtual appliance and how easy it is to play with that. and. Over that video, you'll see it's much easier to deploy than Windows, but a lot of people still do the Windows. They like having the Windows systems. It's very easy to use its GUI and its interface. But now with everything going to the web GUI, the web, you know, the actual web client makes sense. And going and just having the web client and just having the virtual appliance makes complete sense without having to have a fat client such as vSphere. All right, so look here, it's going, it's almost done. And look, we're done. All right, let's go ahead and click finish. Let's move on over to the server. So this video is not too long. All right, we're going to go ahead and use Microsoft Excel, uh, SQL Server 2012 Express. That's going to automatically install and set everything up to use as a database to download all the updates. Once we click install, it's going to go ahead and grab all that. It's going to start actually preparing it and bring it up. And I'm going to go ahead and let it go from here, guys.
All right, now that that's finishing up here, we'll go ahead and just let it tidy up its last few things. I'd say be done in the next 30 to 45 seconds. Oh, look, there we go. All right, update manager stun and installed. So we can go ahead and actually exit out here. Now that we're exited out, we'll go ahead and close out of everything. Open up vSphere. We're gonna go ahead and connect over to the vCenter. And we'll go ahead and just type in localhost. Type in our administrator at vSphere.local. Remember, anytime you set up v the vCenter, that's gonna be the account it uses as administrator at vSphere.local. Go ahead and sign in. It's gonna ask us if we want to, you can go ahead and install the cert. Click ignore, whichever one you want to do. And I just realized I spelt it wrong, so hold on guys, it's gonna tell me I have the wrong info here. As soon as it tells me I have the wrong info, I'm gonna go back out. I gotta fix the username. If I could type today, you know, it'd be much better. But administrator at vSphere.local, right as I was talking about it too. All right, gonna go ahead and click log in. Give a little bit and you should see down the bottom left hand corner where you have connecting and start showing. There we go, it's loading inventory. There we are. We're logged in now. There you are. There's an eval trial up on Fresh vCenter 6.0 server. And that's it. vCenter is now installed and set up. That's all it takes to install and set up vCenter. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Hope everybody learned something. Let me know if I did something wrong or if I didn't, you know, fully understand something correctly down in the comments below. If you found this, you know, pretty helpful and useful, click the subscribe button. I've got plenty more. I'm trying to do as best as I can. I'm trying to learn more, I'm trying to, you know, get better equipment to do better videos and keep trying to improve my video editing. But until next time, I'll see you in the lab.